And hi again, everyone. Jim Knox along with Candace Kruger. And welcome back to another edition of the Best Docs Network, which, of course, features some of the best doctors in the entire Dallas-Fort Worth area helping change people's lives. And Candace, I'm excited about this first doctor because we know all about him, Dr. Ken Reed, who has a unique way in helping people who suffer from migraines. He sure does, and he helps our first patient with just that. I was one of those individuals who've suffered from migraine since about the age of eight. And uh, in 2008, I started to get very strange headaches. They were, they were coming much faster. Uh, they were lasting for weeks on end, um, to the point that I was doing rapid infusions. I had three trips to the emergency room. Um, on the third trip, I lost part of my eyesight. So I went to see Dr. Reed. I was honestly a very skeptical person. Uh, I had no intention of having anything metal put in my body ever. She came in like a lot of patients, still with these devastating daily headaches, had been to excellent doctors. Most of our patients have been to excellent doctors, but they're still at their wits end. The first time I met with Dr. Reed, we met for two hours. We tried a couple of other things first. And then finally he said to me, look, Victoria, I think the only thing we can do for you is a, the neurostimulator. The trial itself was like, it all got turned off. I, I, I didn't know what pain-free meant until I had that happen. It was like the clouds cleared, I could think. We went through the procedure. I had the four lead stimulator in, implant. Right away, she, uh, uh, she did well. Her headaches came under excellent uh, control and it's uh, always a joy to have her and her husband come back to the office just telling me about, you know. I... I had a, um, a bad problem of, uh, of grinding my teeth. And um, 30 years ago, I had some beautiful teeth, and you know, they slowly got worse and worse and worse. And then, of course, I started having cavity problems. And my regular dentist uh, told me, look, they're not gonna last your lifetime. So you, you're faced with either dentures or, or, or you know, redoing your mouth. Many patients find us because they're at the end of the road on their dental history. They have neglected their teeth or they've had habits that have caused their teeth to wear down to the point where they know they have to do something. And they present sometimes after many decades of problems and they're ready now to, to fix those problems the best they can afford to. A lot of the patients fall into the full mouth reconstruction category, which means they need every tooth in their mouth addressed in their treatment. When I finally went to Dr. McFadden, I was looking to him for a permanent solution and something that would last the rest of my life, obviously. And then calmly brought me into his office and uh, literally wrote down on a piece of paper, here are three different proposals. After weighing it, I decided to take the highest cost option for me, which was to put crowns on every tooth. When Bob came to the practice, uh, it was a really fun appointment. He was instantly charming and fun to be around, and, and we became friends throughout his treatment. When Bob arrived, he had had 
four decades of tooth grinding and ended up with almost no, no tooth structure left and his wife hated his smile. We were able to use all of his teeth and perform certain procedures to allow him to keep his natural teeth and improve the way they look through crown treatment. One of the funniest things about Bob is that he carries his before and after pictures on his iPhone. He shows everybody. He shows people that don't care at all what his teeth looked like and how great his teeth look now. Uh, he cares, uh, incredibly cares, how, how good your teeth are. A little bit obsessive compulsive he is, but, but it works out in your mouth to be beautiful. All of our doctors here at the Best Docs Network are about changing people's lives. Like our next physician is Dr. George Farhat, who helps one patient with lower back pain. When going to my regular MD, uh, we had had, I was getting chronic headaches and we couldn't make them go away and we wanted to lessen that pain and obviously not have that. Uh, it was hard to focus, hard to concentrate at work and as a salesman and a general manager in business, one of the things that I wanted to do was be able to focus and pay attention to my customers and to my business associates. We came to Dr. Farhat so that uh, he could look at all of the, the things that were going on in my body. Degenerative disc disease and arthritis are a common reason behind low back pain. Uh, I've known Paul for almost 10 years now. Paul is an active man, he's a, he played sports, he's an avid golfer, he golfs all the time. Uh, when I saw him initially, he had pain in his lower back and down his leg. And uh, he's, there's something special about Paul, he doesn't like to take medications at all for his conditions. He wants to come in, he wants to be treated, get well and move on with his life. When I came to Dr. Farhat, one of the things that we wanted to accomplish was how do we reduce the pain, but ne not necessarily have surgery or a long recovery process. So one of the things that we talked about is the injection process that we've been going on since I've been seeing the doctor for almost 10 years now. What well, I've been doing for him over the past nine, 10 years or so, every time he gets a major flare up, we will set him up for a simple procedure called epidural steroid injection in the lower back. And usually he gets several months, sometimes a couple of years of relief after the procedure. He'll go back doing whatever he was doing before. And when his pain flares up, it becomes intense. He'll call us back, he'll come to the office and we'll go back and do the same routine on him. I can say that we were able to help Paul achieve his pain freedom so he can go back to the same activity level he always has and go back playing golf and doing whatever he likes to do in life. Dr. Farhat to me personally has become a friend as well as a physical consultant to my body. Uh, he, he shows by his demonstration of actions uh, how he cares about Paul Williams and who I am what I do and how I feel, and it's given me something that's very key to my life and the quality of my life. For additional health information, be sure to check out our Healthy Living blog for the best tips, latest medical procedures, and up-to-date news for modern medicine at our website at bestdocsnetwork.com. I found a small lump on my left breast after I had my third boy. So I went in, had it checked out, didn't think anything big about it. After sonogram, mammogram, biopsies, it came up cancerous. So I found an oncologist and they did chemo and then set me up with a surgeon for a double mastectomy. The surgeon introduced me to Dr. Herman. I went to see him and we started working out our issues on what we were going to do. When a patient has to have a mastectomy for breast cancer, oftentimes the surgeons that are doing the mastectomies will work together with a plastic surgeon to go straight from the mastectomy into a reconstruction in the same operation. So we oftentimes see the patient before they've ever been operated on, which is great. I think breast reconstruction works best when it's a, a, a team approach. After the, the mastectomy, he came in and put spacers in and filled them with saline to kind of stretch the skin before they put the implants in. And when I came out, I 
had boobs. I had came out, you know, with more than what I had expected. I thought it was, would be flat. When you hear a mastectomy and reconstruction, you don't feel like you'll come out with anything, but I did, and I knew, right then, I knew I was on the right track. Rachel is a great example of breast reconstruction. She is a young woman who unfortunately received a diagnosis of breast cancer at what I consider a very young age. Uh, we found a reconstruction method that fit her particular diagnosis and treatment plan the best. We did her operation for reconstruction the same day she had a mastectomy. Her reconstruction went very well and now she has her breast back. Today I am feeling wonderful. I think I'm pushing myself more that I'm able to do anything I want to do. I feel beautiful and happy and thankful and thankful that he was my doctor. I feel like a new woman, a new Rachel. Your family history is very important to your medical care. For example, there's a lot of cancers that run in family. These are the, what they are. Colon cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, melanoma, malignant melanoma of the skin, also thyroid cancer and ovarian cancer tend to run in families. So if you have a first degree family member, that is children, brothers, sisters, uh, parents with those diseases, you need to tell your doctor so that he or she can screen you more for those diseases. Also, there's a strong family history for premature heart disease. For example, if your mother or father had a heart attack in age 70, that's not a big deal for your particular risk factors. However, if your father had heart disease or stroke prior to the age of 55, or your mother prior to the age of 65, that's an independent risk factor for you to have heart disease. Glaucoma, osteoporosis, these things tend to run in the family also. Also aneurysms, brain aneurysms. If you have more than one first degree relative with an aneurysm of the brain, that puts you at risk for that. So anyway, talk to your family member. Ask them what they have. Tell your doctor and then you can know what's your at risk for. For additional medical minutes from Dr. Honaker, log on to bestoxnetwork.com, click on education and the medical minute tab. Gynecomastia is a very important part of our practice that I enjoy doing. Gynaco means woman-like and mastia means breast or chest, so it's a woman-like breast. On a man, that means not just necessarily obesity, but also the glandular tissue that comes along with it, which is the hard, fibrous area that you can actually feel under the nipple and the areola. We see many young men who get it with the onset of puberty, and then we see many men in their 20s, 30s, and 40s who have no antecedent cause for this. Gynecomastia surgery traditionally has not been a very satisfying operation for either the surgeon or the patient. And the reason why is 99% of surgeons are still doing the same technique that's been done for the last 80 years. They put the patient to sleep, they make a three o'clock to nine o'clock incision around the areola, they start cutting out the tissue under direct vision, then it starts bleeding, they can't see very well, they may get a contour problem or a depression, and then ultimately they put drainage tubes in from the side to drain out the fluid. So about nine years ago, I came up with a new idea. No scar at all on the chest, no drainage tube. We're able to remove the two components of gynecomastia, the fatty tissue and the glandular tissue, through an incision this long under each arm. And there are two instruments that allow us to do this, the use of ultrasonic liposuction, and we have a multi-jointed cutting device. We're able to cut out the rest of the glandular tissue with an instrument that goes through this incision all the way down to the nipple. After we've cut all it out and it's perfectly flat, the last thing we do before closing the incisions is to re-inject the entire field with a long-acting uh, anesthetic gall marking. So when the patient gets up, we've already got the compressive garment on, they're pain-free. They're typically only in the recovery in 45 minutes to an hour, and that stays numb till the next day. They wear the compressive garment under their street clothes uh, for three weeks, and they're done. We see them at eight to 10 days post-op, or we see them six weeks after that, three months after that, and they're delighted. 
Don't forget, for more information on any of the amazing doctors you've seen on today's show, just visit our website, bestdocsnetwork.com. That is the place to go. And Candace, our next doctor, this is very interesting. It's a unique procedure that he has, that he does with patients, that helps relieve individuals with back pain. Let's take a look at Dr. Chad Stevens. I got up in the morning, and all of a sudden, as I stood up, I thought, something ain't right, you know? And uh, so I, uh, I guess pretty quick, I had a horrible pain in my back. I kind of, you know, messed around thinking that I would get over it, you know, that it would go away, and it just got worse. A back fracture is a very important injury. It can be very debilitating to people, and especially in the osteoporotic crowd, the over 65 or around that age crowd, where they're already prone to having very soft bones anyway. It just really took all the fun out of life, you know, because I was hurting so bad. One of the things we can do now is we can actually go in and stabilize those fractures using cement. And it's a very, um, it's a very well-known procedure that has had a lot of different modifications through time. Uh, now we do it, it's called a balloon kyphoplasty. So we actually put a balloon into the bone and blow the balloon up to create a cavity where the cement will travel when we enter it into the bone, so which makes it a safer procedure to make sure the cement stays where it should go and doesn't go where it shouldn't go. When you do that, you're basically doing what a cast would on a fracture on an arm. You're immobilizing it. And what hurts from a compression fracture is movement. So whenever the, the little lady or little gentleman is, is rolling over in bed or getting up to stand, they're gonna have extreme pain. And so they choose not to do those things and they lie around. And when they lie around too long, things happen like blood clots in their legs form. And so there's a lot of things that happen when people are immobile. And so the goal of our practice is to get people active again. The new procedure that he does is a wonderful thing. I would lie down on my stomach <laughs> and uh, then uh, he would work on my back. Even though it's a surgical procedure, they literally feel better when you're done with the procedure than they did when you start the procedure. I mean, we're talking about 60s, 70s, 80s, 90 year old people that feel better and they get up and leave. They walk out and they're home and they're feeling better. Dr. Stevens was just great with me. I feel wonderful now. I just feel wonderful. Hannah was born with a uh, traumatic birth injury. It was an incredibly long labor, lasted a long time, and uh, in the end she suffered a hypoxic brain injury and a stroke. We found Texas Sports Hyperbarics when we were on a search of a number of different therapies for her to help her rehabilitation. We were very lucky that we had a physician friend of ours say to us that if you are looking for the height of human performance and help for your daughter, the best thing to do is to see what researchers are doing. Hyperbaric oxygen treatment is taking a patient, putting them in a chamber and exposing them for a specific period of time. We flood the chamber with oxygen at a higher pressure, um, usually 1.5 or one and a half times the atmospheric pressure to two times the atmospheric pressure for 60 minutes. And then we do this five days in a row and typically for three or four weeks for a total of 20 treatments to increase the oxygen in their tissues throughout their body. The effects of the diving for the hyperbaric treatments for her has been that she has been much more relaxed. Her resting state is much better. Her um, demeanor is much better. It allows her to be much more alert. She's become much more vocal and her response time to questions is much faster. She's more cooperative and you know, just have seen a huge improvement in her overall level of function compared to where we started several months ago. Our hyperbaric technician will look in their ears to make sure that they are, don't have any ear infections or that they can clear their ears. They'll listen to your lungs and make sure there's no wheezing or evidence of a lung infection. Then you lie on the, the bed that slides into the chamber, the chamber's closed, and we gradually increase the pressure in the chamber with 100% oxygen and raise the pressure from one atmosphere, where we're all living, to two atmospheres, or roughly 
30 pounds per square inch. Any parent of a special needs child should investigate the clinical uh, information behind hyperbaric medicine and um, that if they were looking for a place to come and bring their children for treatment, that Texas Sports Hyperbaric would definitely be a place they should consider. What an incredible story the hyperbaric oxygen chamber is doing in helping some individuals. And to find out more about this and other doctors helping change people's lives, log on to thebestdocsnetwork.com. Now it's time to move on to our next doctor, pain management specialist, Dr. A.L. Shaw. Woke up one day about 13 years ago and couldn't stand up straight. And after seeking medical attention, uh, you know, sort of a variety of ways, uh, one of the doctors I saw suggested I come see Dr. Shaw. When we examine scars, I simply take something such as a PDA stylus that is very blunt, allow them or, or, or stimulate a non-scarred area remote from the area with the scar. So they know how this particular stylus feels with the amount of pressure I'm generating. When I touch the scars, quite commonly they are numb. They don't feel them at all until I hit an area of nerve entrapment. And those areas we mark with a skin marking pencil. And those are the areas that we inject deeper than the skin. And then we also inject the entire length of the scar. But as you move away from your surgeries in time, you find that it's, there's sort of a new sort of pain. After you heal from the surgical pain and you, you get back into your daily life, you find that there's some new kinds of quirky little aches and pains and bristly things going on. and, and it, it, it can be scary. At first you can think, oh, my problem has returned. Relative to her scar pain, really did achieve pain freedom. She has other problems that are still generating pain from her spine, but even that's much improved, not from the other therapies that we've done, but just from the scar injections. It's comforting to have Dr. Shaw on my side, to know that it's his goal as well as mine to bring me pain freedom and we work at that together and I think we're doing a good job. We're all different. We like different things. But one thing nobody likes is pain, especially when it keeps us from doing the things we love. Luckily Pam is here. Whether it's back pain, carpal tunnel, foot and ankle pain or more, PAMA physicians are dedicated to their specialties and dedicated to your quality of life. Don't let pain keep you from doing the things you love. PAMA, pain freedom. When patients come in to see me to talk about pain management, one of the first things we're gonna talk about is how are they managing their pain? If they're in pain, then they're not gonna have a good quality of life. That's why I became a pain management physician. Return patients to a better quality of life and, and give them pain freedom. The first treatment process, it really is just listening and then educating and then physical exam. Uh, oftentimes we're taking some x-rays uh, to make sure you know, how much arthritis a patient may have, if they had any previous fractures. And sometimes, especially with the back or the neck, they may have had a fracture and you know, we're never told. Then we'll talk about um, if we need to do any more further imaging, some more complex imaging, or if we have to do um, any electrical studies to find out if they have any nerve damage. Uh, we'll talk about if they have any instability, um, and then we'll talk about how we correct and treat that. Well, there's so many medications, it just runs the, the gamut. There are um, over-the-counter anti-inflammatories, which are fine. There are prescribed anti-inflammatories, mild narcotics, heavier narcotics, neuromodulating medications or medications that decrease the irritability of nerves, different medications that are transdermal, they go through the skin. 
that can help out with some of their pain as well. So the, it's, it's sort of a, a, a rainbow of different uh, medications that we can give. Oftentimes, uh, patients will be taking medications and they can become frustrated with that and they're looking for something that lasts longer and that's when we start talking about doing injections for them, epidural injections, uh, nerve blocks, uh, facet injections, and that can help out uh, with the decreasing their pain for a longer period of time. Um, while somewhat more invasive, uh, it's still very, very safe, very uh, fast to do and can give uh, up to weeks to months of relief. Our ultimate goal is to give people pain freedom to go out about and do their normal activities and really enjoy life again. I was 335 pounds. I had a sleep apnea. Um, I had high blood pressure. My back hurt all the time, my knees hurt all the time. I used to be sleep standing up on the job. Like a lot of people have with sleep apnea, they get uh, headaches in the morning, they don't sleep well at night, they're waking up all the time. Um, oftentimes they'll wake up feeling like they're choking or, or not able to breathe. Then during the day, because they're not sleeping well at night, they're drowsy. And so, um, you know, kind of his biggest problem was he would have episodes where he'd like fall asleep during the day. I told it out of Mercedes Benz, went to sleep at the red light, and uh, when I woke up, I just hit the gas and ran in the back of somebody. I knew something was wrong with me serious then. So that's when I started trying to get my weight together. That's when I said I'm gonna do something. Physiology of sleep apnea is real important. The chemicals in your blood change, and the carbon dioxide levels go up, and your acid-base balance gets out of control and then that causes other changes, which leads to high blood pressure and headaches. Getting a correction on this problem is, is real important. And he was telling me with being that size and whatsoever, it's like carrying another person. That's why I was tired and hurting all the time. And we set up a appointment to have a surgery and I had it on April the 10th. From there, man, life changed. After discussing all of the choices with him, he thought that a a uh, gastric bypass would be the best for him. What it means is you take the stomach, which is a, an organ about this big, and you create a small stomach by physically dividing the upper portion of the stomach away from the rest of the stomach. You divide the intestines and, and bring up part of the intestine to that small pouch and then reconnect it farther on down. Oh, I feel great, man. I don't have sleep apnea anymore. I don't have to uh, sleep on the sleep apnea machine. I'm like one of the best workers at the job now. I'm, I'm full of energy. I'm back playing basketball, something that I love to do. I feel like a, a whole new person. I look like I used to look when I was in high school. It's been awesome. I, I, I can't describe it enough, man. Well, that'll do it. That'll wrap up another edition of the Best Docs Network, featuring some of the best physicians in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that are helping to change people's lives. And of course, Candace, for more information on any of the doctors you see in today's program, head to the website, BestDocsNetwork.com. And if you have a question or a comment for us, we'd sure love to hear from you. Send us an email at info at BestDocsNetwork.com. And don't miss it. Coming up next, Best Docs Network featuring Forest Park Medical Center. So long, everyone. We'll see you next week.